Hello everyone, how are you doing today? I'm back with another video and in today's video I'm gonna show you guys how to service up your ASUS laptop and repaste. This brand is an ASUS S46C series and this method applies for any S46C series class laptop. These two, they do come with an iCore 3 processor which are really good but they do get overheated and they fill up with a the thermal paste dries up really quick and so you might want to put a good thermal paste, a good brand and clean up uh, your fan system and your ventilation. It's very important that you should do this every year, every two years, depending on the usage that you give to the laptop. And the tools we're gonna be using in this video, I'm gonna show you guys one by one, and all the tools that I use, you can find them in the video description, and so you can look for it yourself in there. All right, tool number one is a workshop towel. These are really good to have for servicing. You need a toothbrush, old, new toothbrush, you will need a screwdriver set. I use the iFixit screwdriver set. They always have all the bits that you need for every laptop, cell phones. The bits are made out of S2 class steel. That means they're really tough in steel. They will not just go bad. So you're gonna use a Phillips number one. You can get the pro version of this screwdriver set, which will include you an opening tools and tweezers, this and that. Or you can just get a simple set a screwdriver and for the opening tools you can buy a guitar pick, a metallic guitar pick. A metallic guitar pick are really suitable to opening covers, uh, cases, everything else. They are really tough to bend and soft edges make them really suitable not to scratch the case. Uh, curved tweezers is an optional but let's see if we might need it so keep that in hand. And the most important part would be a uh, thermal paste. What kind of thermal paste you're gonna be using depending on your budget and if you wanna go crazy. I recommend you guys to use an Arctic MX4. These are really good. If you wanna go a little cheaper, you can go with an Arctic Silver 5, which are still good. You can go over the board and overkill with a Thermal Grizzly Cryonaut. But we're not gonna use this. Because the client, it, they just want to pay for Arctic MX4, which is really, really exceptional, really good. So, we do need an alcohol and uh, not to drink to just clean up the thermal paste. This is an isopropolic or isopropolic alcohol, 95% plus. So, with all this on hand, we're going to start doing the service. First, you want to power off the laptop, we're going to remove the battery. By pulling the trigger and holding and putting it on lock position and slide back the battery. Alright, there we go. Now we're going to remove the bottom service cover right here, removing two screws. And we're going to slide it towards the front end of the laptop and we're going to lift it up. We're going to remove the hard drive by removing one, two, three screws for the caddy. Also, I made another video how to upgrade the hard drive, the RAM, if you wish to see those videos. Slide down the hard drive towards the left side. And once you see this, this pin is disconnected, just go ahead and lift it up. Put the hard drive on one side. Now we're going to start removing all the screws that we see on the bottom. You have to keep in mind the two screws on this side are the short ones and these ones are the short ones too. So I call them the hinge screws. So remove the four hinge screws first and keep them in one pile. And we're gonna start removing all the screws under the battery, the one in the middle, one right there, and three right in this end. Go ahead and remove them. They all should be the same size and height, but I have seen that sometimes one of the screws is a little longer than the other. Uh, I know that in here the DVD drive is a little bit longer screws. I don't know why. It doesn't have to be, but it's a little bit longer than the rest. Alright, once we remove the screws, we're gonna slide the DVD drive towards the left, bring it up. Now you wanna grab your hand, put it in here, and pretty much you wanna hold down the bottom case, the screen, and with the other hand finger, just pull this side up. Or if it's not coming up really hard, 
you can help it out by grabbing the opening tool and stick it between top and the bottom cover here and you can just wiggle it around and it will help to release the front end of the laptop just like that once you have this front end released a little bit you can do the left side too just work yourself by the heat sink place right here right there and just wiggle it around and it should release it just like that but if you don't want to do that you can simply i see it effectively pulling this side up slowly i forgot the screw in the middle here and lifting up from here and bring it up wiggle it around it will get released just lift up from the front side towards the back because there is a a speaker cable right in here you can pull this jack back if you wish or leave it there if you want to pull it back just wiggle it around grab it by the neck of the jack and pull it back so this is the bottom case you can go ahead and clean it up it is kind of dirty it's not that dirty and down here we're going to see the fan the heat sink everything there's no gpu in this version your version may have a gpu so the heat pipe will extend over here and you will have one, two, three more screws in here to remove. In this case, there's only CPU and the warranty label is right here. You're going to peel off this warranty label and it comes off entirely. So you can actually safeguard it to one side and place it back on. So what are we going to do first? We're going to remove the fan cable here. We're going to use the tweezers, curved ones. We're going to put the tweezers right at the edge of the fan cable right there. And we're going to work it around and push it towards the left side and there we go and once you remove the fan cable now we're going to remove the screws for the fan one right there and one right over here by the jack and one right this on the tape right here remove these ones now the fan is loose but we're still not going to lift it up because we have to lift up there are four screws for the CPU. So go ahead and remove the four screws for the CPU. Now we're going to grab it by the tail and just lift it up gently. The tape will come out and that's how you remove it. Now we do need to open up here and to clean up the dust buildup in this. You might have an extra excessive dust in there. It's not just clean up the thermal paste. To do that, we are going to gently remove this tape on top and the bottom side tape too and there's one more tape right in the corner but this one i'm just gonna bend it over there we go now we remove the fan you can use a toothbrush to clean this one up and Clean up the duct system, the ventilation with a toothbrush nicely. Once you clean that one up, clean this one up with a toothbrush with a compressed air. All right, once we, we clean this ones up, we're going to remove the Kapton tape on this end. And we don't need it, but what the heck, just keep it. And we are going to clean up the CPU first. Soak the towel right in here. And go ahead and clean up the CPU. just be gentle i use a workshop towel because it, when you put alcohol it becomes really fragile the towel so it will not yank the capacitors around the cpu so that's why i recommend you guys to use this workshop towels not any other towel once we clean that one up we're going to clean up the heat sink i'm just going to remove the excessive thermal paste by my hand We are going to clean up the heat sink nicely. You do not need to clean up the Kapton tape or anything like that, but what the hell. You're already here. Go ahead and clean it up. It's absolutely not necessary cleaning up the Kapton tape. Once you clean it up, just even if it's not sticky, just align it over the die. Make sure it's not overlapping the die it has to be around the die not overlapping it at all so i think i put it the other way around so that's why it's not 
centering properly so I'm gonna flip it over and there we go now we have it in there in position we're gonna clean up the die again because I put my fingerprint in there you don't want a fingerprints because you don't want a grease from your finger being on top of that because they do get really hot now we remove all this tape from there those tapes direct the heat through the heat pipes here so we need to put those back on so what we need to do first is to sit down this one over here first let's put the fan on the bottom here so let's go ahead first cover this part up once you put the fan in here let's put the thermal paste on the cpu do a tiny line not a drop tiny line right there now i do like to bend these legs a little bit backward to give more tension to the heat heat sink toward the cpu so in order to press on the cpu so the heat transfer gets better because we know as a physics told us that the more pressure between the two compounds the better heat transfer or cold transfer so first you see i put the fan down but i can't fit this one through so I have to put them, pull the fan little back, put the heat sink right there, and then sit down the fan right on top. There we go. Now we're gonna bring it over, align it, and first I'm gonna put the four screws for the heat sink. So I'm gonna prepare the other screw on my hand, hold it. Do not lift up the heat sink. Make sure you always cross the screw them. So do that side, and then do cross the cross screwing them just like that and then do the last two all right once you did that put the fan cable in place just slide it to the jack now this one we need to air to flow through here all the way in so we need to put a tape here you can use an electric tape if you wish but if you want to be really nice use this tape again i'll leave the link in the video description it's called gaffer's tape they are really good so I just pinched mine in here so these are Amazon basic gaffers tape so they're really nice now we're gonna you can do a better job than me come on I did a horrible job cutting this tape and I'm gonna place it on top make sure you do not cover the exit side on here make sure it stays it doesn't matter if you cover here but do not cover here and do not cover the ventilation right in this side. Just over the heat pipe. Put it right there. Now put the three screws for the heat, the fan, one in this corner, one at the back, and one by the The gaffers, this tape is being used on a laptop a lot. So this is a gaffer's tape right here too. All right, I'm just gonna put the warranty label on the screw right there. Let's stick it nicely. I don't want to come off and go through the fan. Once we got this done, now you're going to grab the bottom cover. And as you clean it up, grab the jack for the fan, for the speaker, and just push it through here. Bring the cover straight over and push it down. Make sure you a few clicks on the corners. And we're going to grab the hard drive, slide it in, put it right there. Put the screws for the hard drive first. Remember this, there's no screw going in here, so don't put a screw there. Grab an optical drive or DVD drive. Bring it over and slide it in there. Put the, four, the two screws on each corner of the laptop by the hinges first. I'm going to put the longest screw on the DVD drive as mine is a longer screw on here. If yours is not, then just put it on. And the rest of the screws, I'm going to put on the covers everywhere except here and except here as they go from the bottom service cover. Again, I hope you guys liked this video and helped you guys out to do your own service and cleaning for your Asus laptop. If you did, you know what to do. Click the like button. I really appreciate it. If you want to subscribe to my channel, it will be a great support. 
If you have any question or request, leave them in a video comment and I always try to answer them as soon as I can. As always, thanks for watching guys and I hope to see you guys in my next video. Just gonna finish up putting up these screws. And you want to grab the bottom cover, put it in an offset position and slide it all the way inward and put the last two screws on top. And that should be all.